Saint of the Day September 20th Feast of Our Lady of Walsingham In 1061, the Lady of the Manor of Little Walsingham in Norfolk, a widow named Richeldis, prayed to Our Lady asking how she could honor her in some special way. In answer to this prayer Mary led Richeldis in spirit to Nazareth and showed her the house in which she had first received the angel's message. Mary told Richeldis to take the measurements of this house and build another one just like it in Walsingham. It would be a place where people could come to honor her and her son, remembering especially the mystery of the Annunciation and Mary's joyful yes to conceiving the Saviour. After some time Augustinian canons took over the care of the Holy House and enshrined it in a special chapel within a much larger church. Pilgrims began to come from all over England and even abroad. From the time of Henry III nearly all the kings and queens of the realm visited Walsingham, as well as hundreds of ordinary people seeking help, healing and inner peace. Walsingham ranked with Rome, Jerusalem, and Compostela in importance as a pilgrimage destination. However, the shrine was destroyed at the time of the Reformation, and only rebuilt at the beginning of the 20th century, mainly due to the inspired leadership of the Anglican vicar of Walsingham, F. R. Hope Patton. He revived devotion to Our Lady under this title and built a new shrine church and holy house in the village, together with a statue modeled on that depicted on the ancient priory seal. It shows a seated Mary with her son on her lap holding a book of the Gospels. Meanwhile a Miss Charlotte Boyd had purchased and restored the ancient slipper chapel a mile away and gifted it to the Catholic Church. This has since become the national shrine of the Catholic Church in England. So Walsingham is a village dedicated to Mary, a place of ecumenical pilgrimage with a growing understanding of the original message of Walsingham as received by Rich Eldis that it should be a place where the joy of the Annunciation could be remembered and celebrated for the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us through Mary's joyful and ready yes, spoken within an ordinary house that would become the boyhood home of the Son of God himself.